Hello everyone and welcome to your asynchronous lecture on purposive communication which cover or which will cover the last topic of our discussion of chapter 1 lessons 1 2 and 3 and this will be ethics in communication all right so uh, to begin with let's quite review the uh, previous objectives we have over the past uh, two lessons we had last time okay but before that I know that all of you have been uh, quite dazed over the week uh, because of the, uh, the lousy weather okay it's quite raining every now and then so I want us to calibrate our minds okay to be on thinking English okay so that we can all focus on the subject matter and the lesson to be discussed okay so are we now thinking in English guys all right good great so let's go over the uh, objectives once again so at the end of this chapter so we're done, we'll, we'll be done with chapter one you're expected to first increase your knowledge in communication including the uh, processes and principles and then heighten awareness on communication ethics resulting in consensus respectful interactions and then lastly is to apply the gain knowledge of what you have learned here in communication processes principles and ethics through the exercise which you will be given later on right after this quick discussion and uh, that would supposed to help us okay help you okay uh, more directly in order to further develop or enhance your communication performances especially not only with the local clientele but on a global and international setting okay so <clears throat> we begin with the last lesson this will be ethics and communication so to begin with let's define what is the meaning of ethics so ethics or what we call basically moral philosophy comes from the Greek word ethos which means custom habit character or outlook when you say custom habits these are the things that we usually normally do so in other words these are the actions or the standards in which we repeatedly uh, do okay to the people whom we encounter with okay <clears throat> so it is the moral philosophy of a person's conduct and that people in general expect to be treated with dignity fairness respect or with basic courtesy in their communication encounters because especially in our field of career that we are in the tourism and hospitality industry this kind of you know this respect and courtesy which we have repeatedly explained over the past few weeks must be already embedded in your mindset or in your system because like I told you in the future you will be dealing with people and you will be talking with people Okay, and w when we speak of people, people who possess um, emotions, who possess um, character, personality, and uh, conduct in general. So, our display of attitude, behavior, will be mirrored or reflected on the way we internalize the very essence or significance of Okay, mutual respect okay, in our everyday communication encounters, starting as a student. All right? So ethics and communication, I've just uh, discussed here, evolving into at least four. There's, there are several ways of expressing uh, ethics and communication or that sense of etiquette. All right? But I don't want to dwell too much on that. But what instead, what I focused on are the most relevant that is connected or related to your career. So if we're talking about ethics or sense of etiquette in the, uh, not only in the hospitality industry, but in general, okay, <clears throat> I have uh, uh, explained it on these ways. So look at your module. If you open that up, okay, I have actually highlighted four of the things you need to remember when we talk about um, ethics or etiquette 
when it comes to our everyday communication. Okay, first of all, is adhering to the golden rule or the platinum rule. Well, everybody is already quite familiar about what the golden rule on ethics is. So remember that uh, famous saying by moral philosophers that um, do unto others what you want others do to you. Do you remember that? Okay. So that's basically an expression of mutual respect. You know, do to others what you want others to do to you or do not do to others what you don't want others to do to you. That is the basic rule about mutual respect that we talk about, okay, in our <clears throat> personal, you know, uh, interactions with other people. But there is one more, okay? There is this platinum rule. So you know that platinum is higher than gold, right? Okay? So the platinum rule says that, according to Bennett, that it is the rule that stresses on treating others okay treating others what others expect them to be treated how do we explain this okay if you if someone okay if someone expects himself or herself to be treated as a, a growing person or a, a not really a mature person but at least a grown up person then we have to give them the benefit of treating them one you see so the, the platinum rule is like um, you know giving the benefit of the doubt of uh, sharing okay of sharing the kind of respect the way that person expects to receive okay like for example um, me as a teacher as a teacher I expect that I will be treated with respect as a teacher, I'll be. Um, I'm expecting that my uh, my my lectures, my discussions would be would be learned when I ask you to to get a pen and paper, for example, jot down notes while I'm lecturing. You'd follow it. You'd follow the instructions. Okay. So that's what we call the platinum rule. Okay, giving to the person what that person expects from you the way he wants you to treat him or her do you understand the difference between what the golden rule is from the platinum rule so remember that guys so the platinum rule is more than just giving respect it is giving the right amount of respect the expected kind of respect to someone that is what Bennett was trying to uh, express. So going over with the discussion, uh, Gent added that ethical communicators address people of other cultures with the same respect that they would like to receive themselves. So if our Muslim brothers and sisters okay, want, uh, want that respect uh, uh, irregardless of religious you know, differences, okay, we respect them as they are, as persons. Same as with Christians. So if a Christian goes to a, the, uh, to an, uh, a country that is dominated by Islam, a Christian would also want to be respected with the amount of respect given to him as a person, irregardless of his or her religious affiliations. It means there should be no biases, there should be no prejudices, okay or unfair treatment just because of certain differences that's what what we call applying the platinum rule okay that next to that is number two considering the feelings of the receiver this is very important remember when we talked about the word tactless or tact okay in in, in our everyday conversation so when we when we say considering the feelings of others it is our way of realizing that people are not just cognitive, you know, that people are not, are not just mentally equipped, but they are also emotionally equipped. So in other words, 
whenever we talk or speak to other people, we have to bear in mind about the kind of words or delivery we are going to, to give to them. How we address them, how we pay our courtesy, our, you know, things like that. Whenever we, we're, we're, other, we're with other people. So we have to consider their feelings because people are emotional beings. Okay? Third is acknowledging the source of idea and information. Now, this is what I think is lacking nowadays in our, you know, way of communication because a lot of people are always tempted that whenever they go online, they believe that what they get, okay, is something that should be not just shared, but you know, we, we, we fail at a certain point and we need to acknowledge the information that we get from other sources. So that's the third one. Okay? As communicators, whenever we get a piece of information or a source of information outside, especially online nowadays, okay, we must know how to acknowledge it. Meaning we should not pretend we should not pretend that we own the information, okay? There are two important things that we need to avoid, okay? About getting information and sharing information with other people. Number one is learn to express. First is learn to express where the source of information is, okay? You, you might want to write that down, okay? You might want to write down, get a pen and paper, write it down. Because this will be good in the examination. Okay, so the first thing is that learn how to acknowledge, okay, or express the reference or the source of your information. Because whatever you tell online is read by a lot of people. Okay, you have your friends, you have your friends' friends, and you know, when it goes public, it, it's it's like a virus. Everyone can read it. Everyone can see it. So the first thing, the first rule about proper communication, about ethics and communication, is that never pretend to own, never pretend to own a source of information when you know it's not yours. What do you call that violation of, of communication? Okay, you were taught about what what do, you, what do you call a kind of violation wherein you try to, you know, express an information where you have not acknowledged it, pretending that it is yours originally what do you call that huh yes we call it plagiarism correct write that down to plagiarize or plagiarism is a violation it's a you know it's um, something that we should avoid in our professional or academic environment there's nothing wrong about borrowing information from other sources because that's part of the educational process. But don't forget, remember that in your research subject, remember that? Remember that when you were conducting research, your teachers adamantly explained to you about how you get, about how you take out information okay, from other sources by creating a, a reference or what we call a bibliography, correct? remember that and that they 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 told us that we get we should get resources make sure that we point out who is the author or what 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 they, it was published okay where was it published so on and so forth okay wh why do we need to do that because we have to explain that in our re in our research study we read and acknowledge the source of information coming from people who have gone through the subject or the, the topic that you are working on and that's also giving you know proper respect the right respect to the owner okay to the owner or owners of the information that you get correct all right so that's number one avoid plagiarism second is when you get an information be sure to make an effort on making a research about it because the problem nowadays is that when we get an information we are so tempted to immediately share it 
you know that the click button that says share it's really annoying sometimes because wh whenever we open our notifications and we read a bunch of information coming from other people such as our friends we get confused sometimes and we, we and, and sometimes we get odd and then we feel uh, you know indifferent in, in a way because if we are misinformed about the news that we share because we didn't make you know an effort to check its authenticity its genuineness we are sharing what we call fake news I repeat fake news okay so stop sharing fake news to everyone if the source of information is not clear to you and uh, you know you must you must by sharing this you might hurt or you might intimidate or you might antagonize a lot of people whenever you share a piece of information so make sure you make a research do the check and balance you know about do um, reading the pros and cons about a certain topic or discussion not just by in illicitly sharing it without okay just following your drive without due consideration that, because that's, that's unfair okay fake news is unfair ladies and gentlemen so I, I, I want everybody to take a note of this okay one last time <clears throat> that when it comes to the ethics of communication okay what are the things you should avoid first avoid copying information which is not yours because that is a crime okay plagiarism second stop spreading fake news because you don't help the society by spreading false information okay so for those people who repeatedly commits this okay they should be dealt with with authority and let us not add let us not add to the volume of misinformed people just because we just get carried away by the false information that we read you have to make a research for yourself that's the way to do it not just getting carried away and just pressing that like button or that heart button saying that you're that you completely agree with it right because it does not it does not, it does not make you a complete person by just you know going along the time you know, you're not using your head you're just only swayed by your emotions. Get yeah, I like that. You know, something like that. You get you get driven by emotion, not using your head, by checking the details, by, by checking the source. Okay, so that's very important. And then lastly, okay, last is speak the truth. This is this may be the easiest way of saying how ethics goes with communication but in reality is the most difficult okay well it's, it's easier said than that that's true all right but speaking the truth is basically the purest way of expressing your true self your true emotions your true feelings Sometimes even if the truth hurts, you know, even if the truth hurts, you ought to say it. You must say it. What people dislike the most is that you know what the truth is already and you try to deny them about it. That's what pisses a lot of people off. Especially in, in our in our career in the BPO industry. You know when you're in front of a customer's checking account and he or she is asking for information or details of why he or she is being charged with this charged with that why is money being looted out from from his or her bank account all right and you see the information explain the truth rather than you know beating around the bush uh, trying to do away how to that's a scamming okay that's how a scammer works you try to bend the truth by saying that this is uh, what it is where in fact in reality it is not okay 
So, I know it's hard, but as a person right now, it is better that you speak the truth than do a lie and say that you're doing it for the sake of, you know, saving so so someone else. No, that's not correct. That's not right. So, that is the universal rule. Speak the truth, for the truth will set you free. Okay, so that ends our discussion about the last topic we have on ethics of communication. So, after this, you have your um, usual assessment, okay, lesson assessment, which I hope you did already, okay, that's supposedly 1 to 10. And uh, <clears throat> for the activity we have here, a lot of you are already asking about this. So, here's a writing task for you to do. So, I have here a communication situation, okay, that you need to work on, okay, right? So, it says here, express your answers to the following situations by applying the communication ethics we have just discussed. So, uh, this is for 25 points. Okay, here are the guidelines. First, write your answers in MS Word only. Okay, so, try to type it out on MS Word first, okay, and upload it on your Moodle platform. I will provide you a space there, which I will do right now, right after this, um, a space where you can submit your written activity when it's already done, when it's already written, good, okay, well and good. And then your answer should not be more than 500 words in total, okay, for all the five scenarios, meaning at least answer in one or two short paragraphs and then upload it and then attach it to the Moodle platform um, don't worry about the timeline okay uh, this activity this writing activity will be open up until next Sunday yes that's correct next Sunday that will be um, September 26 so this activity will be open up until September 26 so don't worry don't pay attention to the timeline given there okay but I sincerely encourage everybody to write your answers and express yourselves in English no Taglish please no Filipino no speaking the vernacular okay I want you to practice writing and expressing you have a week to do this okay a week to prepare so um, two weeks actually in advance all right since after last week i already announced this so once if you're ready you can only upload it once you see the submission um, area on your moodle platform you can upload it there and i'll be the one to check it okay so the first scenario would be this your best friend confided to you that he or she is already in a relationship but wanted to keep this as a secret since his or her parents does not allow your friend to know that he's already or that she is already involved in a romantic relationship. However, one day, your best friend's mother called you up to confirm a rumor about your best friend having an affair, okay, like a boyfriend or a girlfriend. So what will your answer be to your best friend's mom? What do you think is the best thing to do? So I want you to reply, like, you know, answer by saying, Okay, if I am the best friend, what I will say to my best friend's mother is this. And then write, 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 whatever you, you, you think is best for that situation. Okay? Second is this scenario. Some of your classmates have spread bad rumors. You know, rumors and bad gossips about one of your closest friends. Now, you are not sure whether the gossip is true or not. Okay? No gossip is ever true. Okay? What would you tell to your classmates and how about your closest friend? How would you how would you approach you know telling these gossipers? How, how, how would you you know stand up to this kind of people? Alright, so I want you to write it down and tell me how you how would you handle this situation. Third scenario. One of your friends is rest, ranting on social media, okay, here is on Facebook, and is trying to harshly hit on someone he or she happens to dislike a lot, you know. These are the, your common bashers. And you wanted to support your friend's statement by simply liking the post, knowing that this can only be seen by your group of friends and that you are not saying anything 
in addition to your friend's offensive post. Is it acceptable to like the post? Is this a form of cyberbullying? Explain your answer. Okay, I think you know how this works nowadays. And uh, I'm afraid some of you have been like, you know, a victim of cyberbullying. Okay, so how would you handle the situation if this is you encounter in real life? Okay, so write it down. And then four, you saw your best friend's boyfriend or girlfriend flirting with someone from the school where you are studying. You have known your best friend as a steady and faithful partner in her relationship. So what are you going to tell to your best friend's flirting partner? How are you going to tell this to your best friend also? So there, there are two scenarios here. One is how are you going to tell this to the, you know, to the person that your best friend's flirting at? And then second is how would you tell this to your best friend so yeah you have to answer in two ways first is to the you know to the other victim that your best friends flirting with and to your best friend okay and then five here's the scenario your best friend owes you money for like 500 pesos however your friend does not have the initiative to pay you back or she's like he or she's like you know ignoring that he or she owes you money okay and that's a big sum 500 is a big sum nowadays now even though your friends keep on seeing him her spending money for his or her own vanity you know despite the fact that he or she owes you money and still your friend spends money on other things okay so it so happened that you needed money also badly for a class project or a school project so how are you going to talk this out and approach by asking your friend, you know, how are you going to pay me back? I need, I need the money too. Okay, something like that. There you go. So these are the five scenarios. So you have to answer them by the number. All right. I don't know. I, I don't care if you answer whether you may not answer them in order. You may start with number three, number two. It's up to you. But make sure that when you write them down, put the number of your corresponding answer so I know that what you're answering is number three so always see to it that you number your answers properly based on the scenario expressed here even if you start with number five it's all right just put on you know okay on your your write-up that you are doing number five first okay and make sure I read it properly all right so there you go so this ends the uh, discussion we have for today. I hope this is quite clear to you. If you have questions, feel free to ask and comment on the section below, okay, on the comment box, box and make sure that uh, when you try to express your, uh, your questions, do it clearly, okay, neatly, nicely. Okay, I welcome questions. You have presentation points for questions. And uh, for the rest of the remaining part of the, the discussion on recitation, I will also put into our FB group page all these five scenarios so that everybody can make a comment and that will be part of your recitation. All right? So those who will be making comments on how, do you, how did you answer, what was your best approach in answering those situations, okay, in these scenarios, do that in the comment section of our FB group page. I will put that there, inform you guys. So you can comment there, make your, your, your own stand about all the situations I put, in, uh, put on in here. And for those who will be answering in, answer you have corresponding points. Okay, I'll give, I will give five points for citation. Okay, those who will be answering in the vernacular. You can also answer in Filipino, but my strong encouragement will be in answering in English those who are answering going to answer it in English okay you get 20 points for a citation those who will be an answering in Filipino get five points those who will be answering English straight throughout okay no taglish 20 points all right so that will be added to your grade for the midterm period and speaking of the midterm period all right take a look at here on your assignment I gave it 
last meeting that do, do an advanced chapter reading on number two. We're going globalization, cultures, and communication. So what is globalization in general? That will be the starting point of our midterm period next next week. Because I believe right after the the uh, examinations this week, we will do a synchronous. So I will again provide a recorded lecture similar to this one as part of your asynchronous discussion on our upcoming chapters starting the midterm period. All right. Okay, so uh, that's it for me. Okay, so thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And like I said, if you have questions, don't hesitate to send me a PM, but don't send today because it's Sunday. Okay, send me a PM or better yet, make a comment on the comment section below asking your questions and you get a point for hesitation. How's that? That's a lot better than just sending me a PM. That way you have presentation points as well. Okay, so once again, this is your language instructor speaking. Sunny Salvador, so we are leaving you with this, guys. Always stay safe and stay sharp. Keep punching. Goodbye.